Yeah, pull it back just a little bit. We're a little, little bit loud. Um, as you can see by all of the stuff up here, uh, we're, we're kind of kicking off VBS a day early. Uh, and the reason for that is that a lot of you I know can't make uh, it during the week. And so we thought, let's bring VBS to you. Give you a little bit of a feel of, of what it's going to look like. Uh, and, and really about what the kids are going to be learning because what is, what is important to them is really going to be the same thing that's are important to us. Um, this whole Weird Animals theme is about just the differences uh, that exist between us. Now, we, we, we'd love to think that everything is well in the world and everybody just appreciates and loves the uniqueness that we all have, but it just doesn't work that way, does it? Not at all. Now, this is not going to be some self-help, yay, we're all great, you know, no matter what. And just, uh, you know, this is, uh, I, think, I think, better yet a, a focus on God and just how amazing he is as he has made each of us to be different. We all have different personalities. We have different approaches to things. And, and if something is not offensive to him or, or, um, or sinful to him, then it's, then it's just a difference. Okay, so your hair color, your skin color, your, 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 your taste in football teams. I mean, even if you love the Bears, God loves you. Okay, I had, just had to throw that out there. Just had to throw that out. Hey, come on. As an Eagles guy, I got to do it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a mandatory. See, John's laughing because he's a, he's a Colts fan. So he's like, yes, get him. See, I didn't target you at all. That was good. But we have this weird thing uh, when it comes to differences is that we want to be different but we also want to fit in. And it's like, how does that work? I mean, how can you be unique and stand out and be your own person and yet fit in? I mean, how does that, how could that be possible? But yet in our, in our souls, that's what we yearn for. I want to be, I don't want to be just like everybody else, but I want to fit in with everybody else. Uh, I, I'm always reminded of my friend at college. Uh, this guy would always like reinvent himself like all the time. He had different color hair. He'd have, he'd have different color, you know, th different things he'd wear. And he'd really kind of reinvent himself about every four weeks. And I remember him coming to lunch one day and he's like, oh man, I am, I am, I am never going to conform. I'm going to be my own guy. No one's going to tell me how to dress. No one's going to tell me how to act. And, and he no sooner got finished saying that, then he said, and you know what, I'm going I'm to make myself look just like Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> now, for those of you that don't know who Trent Reznor is, think black, dark. Okay, that's, that kind of covers it, doesn't it? I, I guess, right? Uh, my Nine Inch Nails fans that are here. Uh, see, what he was saying was, I don't want to fit in with guys who wear suits and ties. I don't want to fit in with, with the guys who wear the penny loafers and the IZOD shirts. I don't want to fit in with any of those people. I don't want to fit in with the guys on the basketball team. I want to fit in with a dude with a, you know, with a nose ring and a bunch of tattoos. That's who I want to fit in with. See, he still wanted to belong, but, but it was a specific group. You know what I mean? And we have that. And the problem is that the groups don't always get along. And I think that's the beauty of the church is that all those groups can get along and all those groups belong together and God brings all those groups together. It's, it's really, I think, one of the truly amazing things about the church is that you can have the, the people in the suits and on the basketball team and, and the people that wear the, the penny loafers and the Izod shirts and the, and the spiked hair and the mohawk and the, and the colored hair and the nose ring and the tattoos and they can all get together and we can all be God's people together. And that's awesome. And I think that's what V is going to try to get across to the kids this week and to us as adults that, that no one wants to feel left out. It's probably one of the worst feelings, isn't it? Right, everybody's going to the wedding, but you. Everybody got an invite for the party, but you. Right, everybody got a friend request on Facebook, but you. And then what's wrong with me? We, we, we feel that on a, on a deep level. We want to be accepted. We want to be loved. We want to know that we fit in, but we also want to be unique. And the world doesn't always do unique well. And unique might work with your group, but what happens is, you know, the, the groups tend to, tend, to, tend to look down and exclude the people that are not in their group. And so how do we, you got to work on how we do that and how, we, how do we work that out. And hopefully, I think uh, God gives us some help today. Uh, we're going to look at Luke 17. Because Luke is going to tell us about a group of people that know what it's like to be on the outside. See, I don't know that I can even begin to understand what these guys are going through, but they get what we go through. These guys get it. 
I mean, if you were to talk to any of these 10 lepers in this passage and say, you know, do you know what it's like to be, to, for people to avoid you and despise you and, and think you're weird and not want anything to do with you? And they'd be like, yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. And I'd be willing to bet that their story will blow my story away. They'll make my story feel like, well, like what's your problem, man? Like, you don't have pieces of flesh falling off you, do you? And I, and I have to say, well, no, actually, I don't. And I don't have people necessarily running the other way when they meet me on the street. But that was the everyday life of a leper. And those are the guys that Jesus comes across. In verse 11, it says that he was on his way to Jerusalem, and he was traveling along the border between Samaria and Galilee. So he's kind of north. He's kind of in, um, he, he's far from, from like kind of like, um, like, like central office. Uh, Jerusalem, think central office. Think main headquarters for Judaism. Okay, this is where the really legit people are. Okay, so he's on his way there, uh, and he's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, the, with the leadership there. They're going to put him on a cross there because of what, who he is. Uh, but that's, but that's, where, that's his goal. That's where he is heading. But right now, he's kind of on the outskirts of that. He's kind of far from the head office. He's up in like Samaria and Galilee, which is way north. Samaria was filled with people called Samaritans. And Samaritans were people who were looked down on by the Jewish people in, in headquarters because they were kind of half-breeds. They were the product of mixed marriages. People who were full-fledged Jews who would marry people who weren't. Okay, and so pedigree was everything. And so you're like, like who are you? You're not legit. You're not full-fledged. And so that's the game that they would play. So that's where he's in. And he goes into this village and there's these 10 guys who have leprosy and they meet him. They, they shout at a distance and they call out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Now, what they're yelling was a different thing from what they probably have been yelling before Jesus showed up. Before Jesus showed up, they would have probably been yelling something like unclean, unclean, unclean. And what that meant was we are religiously unacceptable. In other words, we're not allowed in church. Don't touch me because touching me would be like touching a dead man. See, there were all these religious rituals and rules back then about dead bodies and being clean and unclean. And so if you were clean, you could come to church, you could be a priest, you could serve, you could do all the religious things. But if you had come in contact with a dead body, you were rendered unclean, right? And, and I, maybe the only way, you got like spiritual cooties. Uh, you're, you're, you, you'd show up at the door of the church and they'd be like, ah, no, go, go fix it. And, and there were things that they could do, ritual washings and different things that they could do to fix it. And now you're right with God again. And now you're in, you're back in, you can come into church, everything's great, here's your seat, fourth, fourth row in on the right. You're good, okay? You're good. Before that, no, 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 go clean up, come back. These guys, this was their life. Because of a physical disease, this was their situation. So unlike other illnesses, this was tied to their spiritual life. In other words, people thought, you got leprosy, man? You, got, you are really messed up inside. You've got a spiritual problem, and so you are, I mean, you just have a whole mess of problems. Because in those days, they tied your physical issue of leprosy with your spiritual brokenness and your, and your being apart from God. Could you imagine that? Having a sign that says you're unclean, yelling unclean, which was really a warning saying, stay away from me. These guys were the wa original walking dead. Really, I, I think they were. I think the lepers, people leper, they, they should sue the walking dead people because like, they stole the idea. I mean, literally, things falling off. I mean, you're alive, but you're not really alive in people's eyes. And I got to wonder, what do these guys even think? Does God even care about us? Maybe God is even, maybe we're even left out in that, in that field, you know, in terms of God loving us. In fact, in, in those days, leprosy was the way to describe sin. You know how sometimes I'll say, like, leprosy, like, sin is like, a, it's like cancer eating away at you. They would say, well, sin is like leprosy. It was the, that was the way that you described it. And so these guys are saddled with this, man. This is their day. This is every day. And, and notice that when they cry out, they're not like, Jesus, heal us. They're like, Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus, have pity on us. That's the, that's the best they could hope for. Because they realized this wasn't just my, a, a physical issue, but this was a spiritual issue. They were far from their families. They were far from the, church, the, the people of God. They were far from everything. And I can't imagine walking around and people are avoiding you like the plague because literally you are like the plague. Okay? That's bad. 
that's bad. That's not just a case of acne, man. That's not just a case of, right, of having to wear glasses and everyone thinks that's weird or something like that or, you know what I mean, or dressing different. I mean, that's bad and that hurts and that hits us. But these guys had something that was just so massive. So they're like, please, have mercy on us. They saw something in him. But Jesus doesn't act like all the other religious people. He doesn't go away from them. He doesn't keep them at a distance. He says to them, he goes, look, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Why? Because to show yourself to the priest was to be healed. You would go to the priest to show them, look, I, 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 I took care of whatever it was. I'm healed. They would verify that you were healed. And so Jesus is saying, it's done. Go. And as they go, they are not healed. Notice, it doesn't say they were healed. It says they were cleansed. Jesus didn't just take care of the lepers. He took care of what was going on inside. How ripped apart they felt, how, how outside of God's love they had felt. He said, that, I'm going to heal. They, they were healed of that. that. They were cleaned inside and out. Now they could be back to their families. Now they could go and actually have a part of the people of God, a part of the, the religious life of the community. They, were, they were literally came back to life. No longer did they have to wear a sign. No longer would they have to yell unclean. No longer would they have people running away from them. I, I got to admit there was a lot of Oprah moments that day. There were, there were 10 families that were like, it was like, Maury, you know, Maury, like, oh, he's back, you know, and they're, you know, they're just, you know, and the film crew's there, and it's, it's just a beautiful moment because of Jesus. He gave them their life back. Everything changed. And guess what? One of them comes back. One of the guys, realizing that he was healed, comes back praising God in a loud voice, throws himself at Jesus' feet, and thanks him. And it says that he was the least likely one of them all to come back. He was one of those Samaritan guys. Because he had an extra strike against him. In fact, that he was from that group of people that themselves were outcasts. So to be a Samaritan leper is like, yeah, I mean, that's, I, don't get, I don't think it gets much worse than that. And Jesus says, you know, he says, there were ten that were cleansed. Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except for this foreigner? Jesus wants us to make note of this. This is not just coincidence. This is not something that, that should escape our notice. This guy was a foreigner. This guy was far from God in every single way and far from every person on earth, every single way. He spent his life being looked down upon, and he's the one who's the, the only one who's thankful to God for this. And that points to a very important thing, is that people who are the furthest from God tend to be the ones who are most thankful for what God has given to them, and the very ones who maybe had it a little bit better, yeah, they get healed and they're great and they move on. But do they take the time to thank God, to come back to the source and say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for what you did. How amazing is it? And Jesus says, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Rise and go, your faith has made you well. And I can't imagine the story this guy has now. Right, because we all have a testimony. We all have, uh, when we look at our lives, we, we have a lot in common with these lepers, spiritually speaking. All of us, as Scripture says, Scripture lines it up for us. You, we were all dead, spiritually walking dead. Right, I came out alive, and I, got, I had ten fingers and ten toes, and, and, and everything went well, and I grew up, and I went to school and all that, but I was walking dead. I was a leper. As far as God was concerned, as far as all that was concerned, and the religious community was concerned, that was me. That was you. That was all of us. But Jesus did for us, we have to see this, what he did for them. Right? Our best shot was, Lord, just pity me. Just have mercy on me. And he says, I have. I died on a cross. I have. Maybe that escaped your notice. I, I gave my life on that cross, and when I suffered and died, it was for you. It was to show you mercy. I, I wanted to take care of that, that problem you have in your soul, that leprosy that's, that's down deep, where, where things are just falling apart. Things are, are rotting from the inside, and I want you to know that I make you whole again. I make you at, at peace with God again. I restore you again. We've all had times where we feel like we're on the outside. Some of us do are like my friend in college who do it to be an outsider. I spent a lot of my life trying to be an outsider. 
right? I like walking into restaurants and have everybody go, what in the world is that? Because it would happen. Because every single person, when they got wind of me, they would, they would have me see. Because I, I try to get my hair to look as crazy as possible. I remember going to my hairdresser, because I had a hairdresser back then. I'll freely admit that. Comfortable in my masculinity to be able to say that. Because when you're a rock guy, you have a hairdresser. You don't, you don't go to the barber. You don't go, hey, dude, can you like, uh, spike this up and give me some, some... And I wanted to get, I actually wanted to get like, like really sick, crazy like black highlights. Like, I wanted my hair to have, like, these black spikes coming out of it, right? I wanted, like, children to fear me. You know, it was that kind of a thing. And my hairdresser was like, I don't know that I can do that. Uh, you, you might get locked up on a daily basis if we go that route. Um, you don't want to be that, like, devil's spawn look. It's probably not going to work well for you. So I, I kind of backed off on it. But, but that, that's the thing. And, and sometimes we do that to ourselves. And we, we want to, and we wonder why people don't, like, understand but it just proved to me that the world, it, just, it doesn't like different. It likes the same. But, God, but God's heart is for the, the person that is on the outside, for the outcast. That's what I want the kids to learn this week. That's what I want us to learn. That no matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, no matter, no matter even if we've pushed God away and if we've pushed other people away, God comes to us. He does. And he doesn't say, fix it, and then we'll, we'll talk. He says, yeah, you're messed up. Have you ever noticed that? That God comes with some really horrible news. His, his lead thing is like really pretty bad. He's like, okay, first the bad news. Like you deserve to be separated from me forever. You, you, yeah, you deserve all that. Yeah, that's, that is true about you. But, but the most amazing thing is he doesn't do what everyone else does. Because anyone who leads with that really actually leaves, don't they? After that. But Jesus leads with that. He leads with that and he says, despite that, I love you. Despite that, I've forgiven you. Despite that, I, I came for you. And I was willing to die for you. And I did die for you. And it didn't just stop there. I rose for you so that this, this body that you have that, that just fights you and, and falls apart, even that is going to be changed. Even that is going to be transformed. So we get to be transformed spiritually here and then physically the whole thing is going to get transformed for eternity. What a cool thing that God gives to us. And I want that to transform how we see other people. I don't want there to be people that for us are on the outside. Shouldn't that break our hearts, right? If, uh, I mean, think about those lepers. How, how they must have felt if they saw other lepers. I got to think that they were like, yeah, we're going to start a ministry. We're going we're gonna to reach out to these lepers. We're going to let them know about this Jesus guy. And I wonder how many of them. I got I to think at least this one guy is going, hey, you guys, you guys, you guys. Because they know other lepers probably. And, you know, and bringing them to Jesus. This guy can cleanse you. This guy can, can give you your life back. He, he could change everything. He could bring you alive again. And I pray that, and again, we don't know what they did. I know, we know the one came back and thanked God. But I pray that we can start there. That's why we come here, right? We come back here to thank God. That he, that he cleanses us. That He cares about us. But I pray that we bring more people to Him. Because He's the one that can heal them as well. And transform them as well. So let us pray. Father, we thank You. That You've given us life. An amazing life. No longer separated from You. No longer on the outside. And help us long to bring all those who struggle, who feel far from you, who maybe feel far from us. Work in us. Transform us so that we would just strive in all that we do. That we would just yearn to, to bring them to you. Father, Father, not necessarily to church, but to you. Because you are the church. You, you are who we are and what we are about. So help us to remember that, that just, like the, just like you went to those lepers, you come to us and you send us out healed and forgiven. And let us bring that healing and that forgiveness to all people. In Jesus' name, amen.